Hi. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this and then into this. This is gonna be a little bit shorter of a video than normal because the entire process of making this is extremely simple and it's, it's not very complicated at all. So it did not take much explanation, hence the shorter video. But anyway, let's get into it. Today, I'm gonna make a tote bag out of Plarn, plastic yarn. This is yarn that I have made out of grocery sacks. Uh, this is just a ball of my white and blue ones, which is mainly Walmart bags, Five Below bags, and Goodwill bags. Um, just any bag that I have gotten that is white and blue, because I wanted to keep them like the same colors. Um, I have lots more, lots more that I haven't. I have a whole shoe box full that I haven't even gotten to yet and more in other colors. Uh, yeah, but this is what I'm starting out with. This really big ball, which has taken me hours and hours and hours folding bags, cutting them into pieces and tying them together to get this big ball. So hopefully this is enough, but if it's not, I have plenty more that I can make. But um, I guess I will go ahead and show y'all how to make them. So. I have most of my bags all folded up already, but um, start with it like this. You just fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then you just cut it this way. Like chop, 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 chop. And you want to cut off the handles. You can't use the handles. And then you want to cut off this bottom seam of the bag. So. Cut that part off and then and then cut the handles off i'm actually gonna fold this over on itself and normally here i'm gonna fold it again you can fold it however many times you want i'm folding it again and i'm going folded in half just so i can cut it like all at once um but you can layer multiple bags on top of each other to cut more at one time. Also, these are brand new scissors that I got and I love them. They are the best. Um, and they're left-handed too. And this color was limited edition. Like last one left too. It was perfect. So yeah. Okay. Now that I've got all my strips cut, I'm just gonna take some of them. Okay. I'm gonna take two of them and show you how to tie them together. Open it up like this open up another one. I need to show two different color ones. Hold on. Okay, this one's mostly blue. This one's all white. The way I like to do it, I like to get one of them and kind of make a little loop like this and just hold it with my fingers. Put this, the second one on top. I hold that and then I pull that through. So now you get a knot like this. You just pull it together. And now you've connected them. And then you just do the same thing over and over again. I'll show it one more time. Start with this, hold it, hold that. I'm gonna reach inside the bottom one, grab the top one and pull it up underneath and out. And then you wanna make sure, hold, hold this so that it's even. And then you can just pull it. That way it's even, because if, if I would have tied this knot like here, it would have been on wonky. It would have been like this and it wouldn't have been tied. So you want to make sure they're even all the way through. So I'm going to finish that and add it onto my ball and then I'm going to start crocheting. It's been almost a week since I filmed the beginning of this video. So um, here's a little update. This is how far I've gotten on the bag. So I started with a chain at the bottom and then uh, when I got to the end of the row instead of just like doing the chain one flip it over and just do a long rectangle I decided to um, just go like in the round like this so that um, I wouldn't have to basically I just make it all at once I don't have to deal with sewing up the sides or anything like that. 
So when I got to the end of the chain, I just increased like three times, I think, to curve it around and then came back to the beginning and just do, um, when I get to the end of the row, well, I'm not there yet, but um, let's see. When I get here, this is where I'm at right now. I'm gonna finish this and then here will be the end, okay? Once I get to this point right here, I'm gonna chain three and then slip stitch into this stitch and that way it'll be even. Wait a minute, that's wrong. That's wrong. Let me, let me start over. Okay, so I am at this point right here and uh, once I finish this row, I get to here. That's the end of the row. And you can tell because the start of the row was here. It's higher than this part, okay? Once I get here, I do my last double crochet. I'm gonna slip stitch into this stitch right here. And I'll show y'all a bit from a better view once, once I actually get there. But basically I'm gonna do my double, last double crochet, slip stitch into here, and then I'm gonna keep working in the round. But to start the next row, I'm gonna chain three and then do all my double crochets. But yeah, and that's how you, that's, that's how you do it. And it's pretty thick and pretty sturdy. If you remember how big the ball I originally started out with was, um, I'm about like, I'd say this is about halfway. I'd want, probably wanna make it about twice as big as this, or maybe up to like here, I don't know. But um, this is how far I've done. And this is how much I have left of my little plorn ball. And then I still gotta do the straps, so. I might end up running out of this and having to make another ball, but that's okay. It is what it is. Okay, I've gotten to the end of my row here and I have to hold, have it laying wonky like this to be able to show y'all. So this is where the last two stitches are gonna go and I'm gonna slip stitch into here. So I'm gonna do double crochet and a double crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch onto this stitch right here. So I'm gonna show y'all that. It's so hard to do with one hand, but as you can see, now that I've done both the double crochets, now it lines up evenly with the rest of the bag. Now I'm just gonna stick my hook in here, just right through there, and slip stitch. Okay, I yarned over, pulled it through. Now, I can't do it with one hand, but. Okay, but then I pulled it through again. Ooh, my hand's shaking. Okay, and then now I'm gonna chain three. This is what it should look like now after I have chained three. And then I'm just going to continue double crocheting as normal. since I left off where I left off. Because ever since I ran out of yarn, or plarn, um, I was just procrastinating making more because it takes a really long time to make. But I finally did it today. Voila. This took three hours to make. This, this big ball, big ball right here. So um, yeah, that, that's why I was procrastinating. But I used up all the rest of my trash bags. Well, the blue ones. I still have all the other colors, but I used up all the rest of the blue ones. So um, yeah, now I'm gonna use this to uh, finish the bag. But one other thing that I wanna add is that last time, the first yarn ball that I made like this, I just kinda started and I just rolled it up in a ball and I just like let go and just rolled it in a ball over and over again. So it was kind of like anytime I was crocheting with it, it would just be going all over the place, especially since this plastic and stuff, it like, it just comes loose off the ball very easily. So, um, 
I did it differently this time because I learned how to make a center pull ball of yarn. So when I pull this out, like it's all coming out from the center and it's not gonna be rolling around everywhere. Like this is the outer piece and I just tucked it in. I tucked it in under a couple different strands to keep it in place. So I'm gonna show you how to make a center pull ball of yarn, which is great for if you have little scrap balls like these. So this technique is pretty great for if you have little scrap balls of yarn that you need to make when it's not enough for like a full thing. So it's kind of just loose everywhere. And it's also great for if you don't have a yarn winder, then you can just do it by hand. And it's really easy. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do it with this piece of yarn that I haven't rolled up yet. This is gonna be the end part, which is gonna be the part that I pull out of the center of the yarn. So I'm gonna just lay it across my hand like this. And then literally all you do is pretty much just wrap it around your hand. And I try to go in crisscrosses. So like this way and then that way. I try to do that a lot. And then uh, depending on how much yarn you have, once it gets a little bit bigger, you can kind of just take it off and just kind of hold it at the tip of your fingers and just basically just roll it up in a, in a ball. But this end is gonna stick out and you're gonna just pull it from here when you're done. All right, I'm done making my ball of yarn. This is the center part. So when I go to use this again, I will pull this string and my tail end, I'm just gonna tie in. Well, not, I'm not actually gonna tie a knot. I'm just gonna kind of tuck it in under some other strings like that so it doesn't come unrolled. Um, yeah, and it's really as simple as that. You basically just wind it up in a ball and make sure that you have your tail end sticking out so that you can pull it out easily. You ready for the reveal? Ta-da! Cute, simple little tote bag. I know this is not a very common thing that you would see people just out and about with, you know, just a tote bag made out of grocery sacks. But I do think that it is a very good way to reuse old plastic bags instead of them just going in the trash. Um, especially if you're in an area that is very common to use reusable shopping bags, then boom, now you got one. Um, and I just think it's a really fun way to reuse them. Okay, that's all. Bye.